Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing a topic called gear trains from module 5. So, we will be concentrating on the types of gear trains that is simple gear trains, compound gear trains and epicytic gear trains. We will be discussing the derivations of all these three things and finally we will be discussing numericals under these categories. So, in examination we can expect uh, problems mainly from the epicytic gear frames where we will be solving problems in two types. First one is the algebraic and second one is the tabular methods of finding velocity ratio of epicytic gear frames. And second category of problems under epicytic gear frame is torque calculation. We will see how to do that. So, before moving to this numerical, we will just have here a brief introduction about gear train, its types and the simple derivation. So, how can we define gear trains? When two or more gears are made to mesh with each other to transmit power from one shaft to another, such a combination we are calling it as a gear train or it is also called as train of two turbines. Already we would have studied these gear train topics in elements of mechanical engineering. Even in this video I will be discussing the same topic so that it will be easy for us to understand the detailed derivations. The nature of the train depends upon the number one point is the velocity ratio required and the number two is the relative position of the axis of the shaft. A gear train may consist of spur and bevel gears. So already in the same module we have discussed so how a spur gear functions and how a bevel gear works. So we since we have the clear idea about the spur and bevel gears it will be easy for us to understand. So what is this velocity ratio of a spur gear or bevel gear or the relative position of the axis of its shaft. So Types of gear trains, depending upon the arrangement of the wheels or gears, we can classify the gear trains into four major categories. First one is the simple gear train, second one is the compound gear train, third one is the reverted gear train and fourth one is the epicytic gear train. In the first three types of gear trains, the axis of the shafts over which the gears are mounted are fixed, related to each other. In case of the epicytic gear train, the axis of the shafts which the gears are mounted may move relative to a fixed axis. So I will I will explain you with your example so that we can clearly understand what is the difference between the simple compound and derivative gear train and the epicyclic gear train. In the coming slides I will be showing the example of these things. First we will start the uh, introduction about the simple gear train. Here we can able to see that there is only one gear on each shaft and that is shown on the sketch and this kind of setup is called as the simple gear train. We have a driver and we have a driven or follower we can able to see which is mounted on a, a single shaft. So these gears are represented by the pitch circles and the two gears that is gear 1 and gear 2 transmit motion from one shaft to the another shaft. Since the gear 1 drives the gear 2, the gear 1 is called as the driver and gear 2 is called as the driven or follower. So simple gear train, how to find out the speed ratio of the train value? I have taken the same sketch. So let capital N1 is nothing but speed of the gear 1 or even we can call it as the driver in RPM. This is the driver where I have assumed that capital N1 is nothing but the speed of the driver. And N2 is nothing but speed of the gear 2 which I will be calling as a driven or follower and the unit I will be considering here is RPM. Next one is the capital T1 which is nothing but number of teeth on gear 1. That is the driver total number of teeth I will be representing as capital T1 and capital T2 is nothing but number of teeth on the driven or the follower or gear 2. So how to write the speed ratio for a simple gear train is yes, always we should write the ratio with the speed. So driver to the driven which is equal to the vice versa or the reverse of the, uh, the teeth. That is if n1 by n2 uh, if I am writing the speed ratio means which is equal to the t2 by t1. 
Next step. The ratio of speed of the driven or follower to the speed of the driver is known as the train value. That is the thing. But we can uh, simply call it as a reciprocal of the speed ratio is nothing but the train value. So in some other uh, problem or some other cases where we have 3 gears or 4 gears, where the speed ratios, say for example something we are getting as uh, N1 by N4 which is equal to T4 by T1 means, uh, we can write the reciprocal of that as uh, N4 by N1 which is equal to uh, T1 by T4. Now for this speed ratio uh, cal uh, like a formula that is N1 by N2 equal to T2 by T1. The reciprocal of that one is N2 by N1 which is equal to T1 by T2. So always we need to remember whenever we are calculating the speed ratio and train value. The reciprocal of the speed ratio is nothing but the train value. Now we know that. N1 is the speed of the driver in RPM and N2 is the speed of the, uh, here let me consider this simple gear train where I have a driver and I have a follower, in between I have a, an intermediate uh, gear. So if this is the case means uh, how to write the speed ratio and the velocity ratio, we will see the uh, train ratio, we will see how to do that. So let me consider N1 is the speed of the driver. Uh, N2 is nothing but speed of the intermediate gear and N3 is the speed of the follower. Similarly, let me go with T1 as number of teeth on the driver, T2 is the number of teeth on the intermediate gear and T3 is the number of teeth on the follower. We know that driving gear 1 is meshed with the intermediate gear 2. So, how can I write the speed ratio? As I told you, we should write the uh, speed ratio uh, with respect to the driver to the follower. So, I will be going with N1 by N2 which is equal to T2 by T1. Let me consider as the equation 1. Now, moving to the gear 2 and gear 3. So, intermediate gear 2, now it is nothing but the driver and this gear 3 is nothing but the follower. So, the speed ratio for this one will be N2 by N3 which is equal to T3 by T2. Let me write this as the equation 2. Now, the speed ratio of the gear train is uptime by multiplying equation 1 and 2. The same rules I will be following for all the gear train uh, uh, calculation speed ratios. Uh, instead of the 3 gears, if I have 4 gears, 5 gears also, the same methodology I will be following considering 2-2 two, two gears next to next. So now, in this case, I have only 3 gears. So first case, I have considered these two, which is driver and follower. And second case, I have considered this is the driver and follower. And the corresponding speed ratio, I have written here. Now, by means of multiplying the speed ratios, I will be getting the, the final equation. So equation 1 and 2, I will be getting N1 by N2 into N2 by N3, which is equal to T2 by T, T1 into T3 by T2. If I, T2, T2 gets cancelled, similarly N2, N2 gets cancelled. So, I will be getting N1 by N3 equal to T3 by T1. So, we need not to do this uh, formula calculation for all the cases. If 3 gears are there means, uh, always the driver, that is the first gear and the last gear we need to consider. So, with, by using, uh, with, with the help of these, uh, for example, total number of gears is 4 means, uh, we can write it N1 to N4 directly we can write. So, N1 by N4 will be equal to T4 by T1. Now, here 3 gears. So, N1 by N3 will be equal to T3 by T1. You can able to see this is the equation I have got. So, speed ratio generally we can write it as speed of the driver divided by speed of the driven or which is equal to number of teeth on the driven by number of teeth on the driver. And train value, as we know that train value is nothing but reciprocal of the speed ratio. So, which is equal to speed of the driven divided by speed of the driver, which is equal to number of teeth on the driver divided by number of teeth on the driven. Now, we will discuss about what is this idle gears or intermediate gears. Here I have taken a sketch, a simple gear train sketch I have taken where there is a driver and there is a follower, in between we have a idle gear. So, these intermediate, intermediate gears, we are calling it as the idle gears because they do not affect the speed ratio or the train value. The best example is the previous case, we can able to see that there was an idle gear in the simple gear trains, but it doesn't affect the speed or even the any kind of the formulas. So, the same thing only here. So, it is not affecting the speed ratio or the train value of the system. So, what is the purpose of this idle gear? 
to connect the gears at the large center distance and second thing is to center distance means we know like it is the distance 